the technology relating to the availability of cameras that can be are small enough and uh, can be carried around um, on the shoulder or on the neck of a law enforcement officer are now beginning to be available to our law enforcement communities. And these cameras have uh, great potential for enhancing public safety and accountability uh, within the community, accountabilities of all those who are involved in a criminal justice incident. Uh, some law enforcement agencies have started to use uh, body cameras and are having experiences with it. And their policies vary on a number of different aspects of how uh, to utilize the cameras and, importantly, what to do with the data, the video and audio information that is recorded uh, by these body cameras. <coughs> so this issue is happening around the country and also, of course, in Minnesota, where there are a number of police departments that are currently using body cameras. Uh, so it was uh, my belief that it was time for the legislature to take a serious look at this question because we have uh, in Minnesota a certain classification scheme for information that is gathered by the government. And uh, what to do with the data that's gathered by body cameras, I think, is an important public policy question, and that's what is before you today. Uh, prior to this hearing, uh, knowing that the issue was uh, going to be before us, I requested that the interested stakeholders, at least the ones that I was aware of at the time, feel free to send in their comments uh, to my office um, as to how they thought this regulatory scheme ought to be set up. And uh, we did receive input from a number of community organizations and stakeholders. And the delete all amendment that we just adopted incorporates uh, many of those suggestions. And it, it works off of the framework that the data that is gathered is going to be classified as private information. And then it sets forth a number of criteria for circumstances under which that data can become public. It also sets forth proposed criteria for how long that data must be retained, how long that data can be retained, and what is to happen at the end of the uh, use of or retention of that data, namely uh, destruction of the data. It also sets forth criteria as to who has access to that data and under what circumstances. Uh, so members, what you have before you is my best efforts at this time to strike a balance between what I have come to conclude are frankly, some irreconcilable positions. There isn't going to be anyone at the end of the day here that is going to feel that whatever we do is entirely satisfactory, because I think there isn't any way to strike a complete balance that recognizes everyone's interest in privacy and everyone's interest in public accountability. Because every time you have something that's public, for public accountability, you are making public something that was private before. Or at least private in the sense of not on a video that can be posted on YouTube. So this has been probably one of the most difficult policy issues I've struggled with. And um, what I have before you is a proposal that I, I welcome the input from the committee and from the stakeholders and, and those who have an interest in this bill before us today and that's why because this is an important public discussion I wanted to not come to a final conclusion today but to give all of us a chance to think about what is presented here and a chance to make modifications or changes before we make a final recommendation as a Judiciary Committee uh, to the rest of the legislature. And 
I know there are some that would have preferred that the default position for the language for the data be public and that we have selective provisions that allow it to be flagged as private data. Um, I believe given the sensitivity of some of the data that's going to be on these cameras, especially when you've got officers going into people's homes, that the uh, best premise to start with was to make the data private and then define the circumstances under which it could become public. So with that stated, I look forward to the discussion uh, among the members of the committee and, and uh, very importantly to the presentations by those who have an interest in uh, testifying today. Um, I pledge to work with Senator Latz and all of you on this so that we can um, bring about a, a law that first and foremost protects the public, um, but equally important certainly to us and I hope to you that is fair um, uh, at, at, to the officers that are going to be um, uh, using this technology. The biggest thing that we would like is to preserve the evidence to either, you know, prove the allegation against the officers if they in fact did commit misconduct or on the other hand clear the officer uh, for any allegations that are unfounded. So the, the key component that we want to see is the time that the data is retained linked to the, allo the allowable time for a complaint to be made against the officers. Our provisional interest in supporting um, body cameras uh, may go away entirely um, if the end product doesn't um, focus a little bit more on the accountability and a little bit less on the privacy side of things. Uh, we also believe that it would help to have a disciplinary procedure in place uh, for officers who are found to be violating uh, the policies in various ways and um, and also providing additional information in um, an audit than um, what is currently in the bill. If a mom or dad or child are in a park, maybe the mom or the dad falls over with a heart attack and dies or the child just collapses and dies. Police officers come up, they have their cameras on. Uh, how is that categorized, that, that camera? Can a citizen in a situation like that, they're not um, a victim in a sense of a crime, can they um, know that their privacy, that their um, son or daughter that's laying there dead won't be seen? by anybody that just wants to say, I'd like to see that picture, and then all of a sudden they take that information and throw it up on a web. Any thoughts on that? Senator Latz. <clears throat> Madam Chair, Senator Hall, um, I think that, well, the, the default classification would be private, um, and then there would have to be something that would make it public, either the subject of the data, asking to have it, and with permission from the others that are in the video, um, you know, allowing it to be, you know, re either unredacted or redacted. Um, I don't, if, if an investigation took place, if there was some kind of criminal conduct that was suggested to be, you know, be flagged as investigative data and it remains private until the investigation is concluded unless some of the other exceptions are found. Um, but I think just an average citizen, curious onlooker, under this bill, I think, would not be able to request a copy of the video. Okay. And that kind of brings up a, a larger question, too, you know, whether it's, it's that kind of an incident or whether it's something, uh, you know, that might even be more uh, troubling for subjects to, to be filmed about. Um, I, I think I probably only need to say mugshot.com to tell you what the possible exploitative consequences could be of having everything uh, be default public. Um, There's going to be a, 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 a real hammer placed on police accountability. A wonderful opportunity for enhanced accountability is going to be going to be hammered pretty well by this non-public approach. There's also a pretty severe consequence and I'm not here to lecture the cops about what's good for them. But this will interfere with their credibility. 
I don't think it's fully appreciated how much the current language of the bill will tie their hands from releasing video that exonerates them. If you've got 25 people on a video, or 10, and you've got to get all their consents before it can be publicly released, how easy is that going to be? You may not even know who some of those people are. You may not be able to find them. And then, then the answer is, well, you can redact. Redacting video is an extremely difficult task. And the bill not, doesn't just say you have to blur the identity, the face of the subject. You have to blur any data that could be used to identify them. So in many contexts, you're going to be trying to blur more than just the person's face. <clears throat> Digital blurring is a time-consuming, difficult technological task. And it's going, to, it's going to intrude, I'm telling you, on the ability of law enforcement to release these videos to exonerate themselves and to show that they have done nothing wrong. As we all know, the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act regulates data maintained by government entities. Uh, that includes state, cities, counties, etc. The data in question here is I understand the technology and based on uh, testimony from the chief, these data are nowhere located in the state of Minnesota except on the cameras. The data are actually uploaded to Taser International whose corporate headquarters are in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. So if, under the provisions of the bill, I'm a data subject and I want access to the data, how do I get access to the data? Well, I understand from Mr. Neumeister, who spends a lot more time than I do going to police departments, you have to send an email to Taser. Okay. But I'm, I'm really concerned about the fact that this data sits in a private company, okay? Now, uh, I talked to uh, the chief from Bloomington when he was testifying before the other body, and I said, does your contract with Taser include the language required in the Data Praxis Act that makes Taser subject to the Data Praxis Act? He didn't know the answer to that question. He said he'd have to look, and I can understand that. He's got a lot, a lot to do. But unless you somehow deal with this phenomenon, then, you know, in theory, Taser, unless they're somehow tightly controlled legally, could put all of this on the net. In the last few months, we've, we saw the events of Ferguson. We saw the events out in New York with various um, police action, um, oftentimes justified, uh, other times in question by the community. And yet at the same time, it seems like whenever there was not a recording of some sort revealed to the public, tensions would go up. And when there was, uh, if there was a film of some sort on uh, a particular incident, and let's say it, it justified the police's, the police action, then the tensions, although they still existed, they went down considerably because the public could, could see what was going on. And I know we don't mandate uh, body cams right now, but uh, the one thing that I, I just have to, I remind myself on it is it seems like when we do have camera, and it is available to the public, uh, it oftentimes exonerates the police department. 